A week after students at Columbia University in New York first began their camp in support of Palestine, the protests against Israel's war in Gaza have spread to college campuses across the United States. The White House says President Joe Biden supports free speech and non-discrimination at universities. But there were scuffles at the University of Texas as police and state troopers tried to disperse the crowds. Hundreds of students have been arrested in the U.S. since Friday. Well, we have correspondents covering the protests from coast to coast. John Hendren is standing by for us at Columbia University in New York. But first, let's go to Rob Reynolds, who joins us from the University of Southern California. So, uh, Rob, what's the latest you can tell us from there? Well, Kerry, everything is uh, pretty calm and peaceful right now. There are uh, speakers uh, making speeches and leading uh, chants uh, uh, for a group of uh, perhaps a thousand students. It's a little difficult to tell exactly how many. I think the crowd has ebbed and flowed over the course of the last several hours. Uh, the students here are demanding several things, including uh, that they stand in solidarity with Palestinians uh, in demanding freedom for Palestine, an end to the occupation, an end to genocide in Gaza and Israel's war on Gaza. And they're also more close to home, calling for their university, USC, which is an elite institution. Uh, people pay a lot of money to send their children here, or, or, or students pay money themselves. Uh, either way, as the case may be, it's a very prestigious university and the students want it to cut all ties with Israel and to remove board members uh, on the uh, governing board of the uh, college or the university who are uh, involved in the defense industry in the United States that supplies uh, Israel with weapons and so forth. They want to cut off any study abroad with uh, Israeli uh, colleges or universities, uh, and they want, uh, in other words, a complete, a clean break between USC and any Israeli entity. Now, it's all been very peaceful, as I said, uh, during my time here observing this crowd. There have been no uh, uh, confrontations or shouting matches between individual students or anything of that nature, but earlier, uh, when students were trying to set up uh, tents in order to have a sort of camping protest 24 hour. Uh, there were uh, some scuffles, I guess you would call them, as campus police who were armed with uh, uh, weapons, uh, with uh, firearms and clubs and wearing helmets, did intervene. They tore down the tents. Um, at least one student was uh, detained. I'm told by protest organizers, uh, but then released. And a couple of people were roughed up, uh, but there were no serious injuries. Uh, but uh, that is, there, it, it, this is a situation which has been mirrored, as you mentioned, Kerry, around the country from coast to coast, where there have been other uh, institutions and colleges and universities where arrests have been made. And this has all led to a profound debate over the right of freedom of speech on campus, uh, on universities which are dedicated to the goal of uh, fostering free inquiry, of, uh, of uh, fostering a, a culture of, um, of discovery and learning and self-expression. And now those same institutions are caught in a crossroads where there are uh, uh, instances where they crack down on that very freedom of speech. And so that is creating uh, a great deal of concern among the students and among a number of the professors here at USC and elsewhere. Karen. Okay, Rob, thanks very much indeed for that. Uh, let's uh, go live now to John Hendren, who's at uh, Columbia University in New York. Uh, John, can you give us a sense of what it's been like there with these protests? Well, Kerry, Columbia has a long legacy of protests from the Vietnam War to today, but there's a lull at the center of this particular storm. It may be the epicenter, but look around. Uh, you've got students now putting on an extra layer after a warm day grows a little chillier. 
Today was a busy one here. The Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, came here and he spoke to Jewish students and condemned these protests, the ones here and across the country. Well, the students held a little news conference of their own, the protesters, and they made some demands. They say they're protesting the war in Gaza, but they're also protesting their university. They want to know, they want the school to disclose where it's investing its money. They want it to divest of all Israeli investments. And they want amnesty for all of the students that are out here and all of the other protesters. And that presumably includes the more than 100 who were arrested here last week. Since then, the university has given them a new deadline of midnight local time on Thursday as talks continue between the student protesters and the university, and as this wildfire of protest spreads across the country. But you can see how peaceful this is right now. And one reason the university president might be looking for a way out of this conundrum is that back in 1968, another Columbia University president called in police. They violently cleared out student protesters, and that was the end of that president's stormy tenure. John Hendren, thank you. Well, staying with this now, uh, Jeremy Suri is a professor of global leadership, history and public policy at the University of Texas. He joins us from Austin, Texas. Welcome to the program. Uh, we understand that you witnessed firsthand the student protest. Can you tell us what actually happened? Sure. So I was coming out of the class I had just taught, and it is uh, the history department uh, on campus. And I saw a large group of students, and not, not a very large group, but about 200 students who had assembled on a grass lawn uh, behind my building. Uh, it's what we call the South Mall. And it doesn't block any buildings. It's visible to many people, but it's an area that students often sit on to study and things of that sort. And these students were shouting, free Palestine. Uh, that's all they had, maybe one or two signs. They were saying nothing anti-Semitic. They were saying nothing that was threatening. And as they were standing and shouting, I witnessed the police, uh, the state police, the campus police, the city police, uh, an army of police almost the size of the student group uh, collecting themselves. Many were carrying uh, guns. Many were carrying rifles. And then within a few minutes, uh, this group of police stormed into the student crowd and started arresting students. These students were shouting free Palestine. They were not threatening anyone. They were peaceful. They were loud, uh, but they were peaceful and they were not anti-Semitic either. And uh, the police just started attacking them. And that led to more shouting. More students then arrived when they saw this. And the situation became more violent, but it became more violent because the police had attacked the students, not the other way around. So what are university authorities making of all this then? Where is this actually heading? Well, I believe that university presidents, including my own at the University of Texas, are afraid. They're afraid that they are going to be criticized and condemned by politicians, by the governor of Texas, by members of Congress. They're, they're afraid they're going to be condemned for allowing anti-Semitism. And I'm against anti-Semitism too. I'm Jewish myself. I think anti-Semitism is horrible and there has been too much of it. But this, the presidents are overreacting. And what they're doing is they're creating an environment in which no one is allowed to say anything that sounds critical in any way of Israel or any other topic. And they're making it impossible for students to express themselves. I want students to express strong opinions. I want them to argue. I don't want them to say anything that's offensive to another group. And I don't want them to use violence, but we're a university. We should be encouraging free speech. Presidents of universities now are afraid of free speech and they're suppressing free speech. And that is terrible. We should not allow that to happen. Given what you say then, could this eventually lead to some kind of policy change when it comes to how institutions react to protests like this? Well, I hope it will lead to some soul searching. I believed we had a policy until today at the University of Texas and a policy I think most major universities had, which is that peaceful protests were encouraged. Uh, that is actually what we should be about. For some reason, we have abandoned that policy. I would like to see us have a discussion about returning to that policy and setting clear guidelines uh, for that policy. I do fear there are some people who want to limit free speech and limit protests at universities. What is ironic is these are the same people who a few years ago 
were saying we didn't have enough free speech. The same conservatives who said that we were doing too much woke diversity training are now the same people who don't want real discussion of other issues. Uh, and that's very dangerous. The lifeblood of intellectual work is debate and discussion. And from what you've witnessed then firsthand, how strong is the resolve of students? Well, the irony is that this kind of behavior by the police only increases the resolve of students. I cannot tell you how many students, more than 15 to 20 that I spoke with who I saw at this event, some of whom are students I know, uh, were students who were apathetic or may have even been favorable to the Israeli side in the argument. And they see the police acting this way and it leads them to become more radical. Uh, and this is the story of the 1960s in our society. We're replaying that. When the police attack students in this way, it makes other students sympathize with those who are attacked, not the attackers. Professor Jeremy Suri, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you for covering this story. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.